वेलकम लैडीज एंड जेंटलमैन दिस वीडियो इज एन इंग्लिश फॉर उर्दू वर्जन टाइप डॉक्टर यू यू टी एंड द टॉपिक नेम एंड उर्दू यू विल फाइंड द सेम वीडियो इन उर्दू लेट्स कॉन्टिन्यू द टॉपिक फुलोग्राफी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स नो द डिस्कवरी अचीको सिल्वोकिन केमेस्ट नाउन इज जॉसलेव हायरवोस्की वॉज अ पर्सन हु डिस्कवर्ड the technique of polarography uh what is the definition of polarography polarography is the water metry at the dme water metry at the dropping mercury electrode is known as polarography now you might be thinking it is very difficult no it's very easy just concentrate water metry water metry means water Ammeter Ammi means current. Metry uh, means the measurement. So, the measurement of current and voltage at the dropping mercury electrode is known as polarography. Okay, this is the dropping mercury electrode. If you find, if you measure the current or voltage at this dropping mercury electrode that is known as polarography by definition if we say that only the measurement of current at this dropping mercury electrode is known as polarography that's it but uh, for a complete elaboration let's go further what is the purpose of polarography and what is the principle of polarography both are just single coming under the single statement measurement of the current that flows in a solution as a function of applied voltage what we are if what is the principle or the purpose it is actually the measurement of the current which is generated here in the beaker that is generated because of the supply of voltage if we supply the voltage to the solution and that solution contains our analyte that analyte generates a current and that current if we measure that is <coughs> sorry that is actually the purpose of the or principle of the polarography in short if i say that polarography is the measurement of the current that is generated in the solution because of supplying voltage that's it very simple hayaoski he got a graph and that was actually telling him about the analysis we'll discuss that graph later first let us study the instrumentation the instrumentation of the polarography contains potential state potentiometry and uh, the dropping mercury electrode this is the dropping mercury electrode that is drawn here which is also known as working electrode or the cathode electrode and we have another electrode that is the reference electrode and another electrode now is the auxiliary electrode and at the bottom we have anode electrode anode and cathode are the very specific and responsible for this polarography about which we are supposed to know okay so this principle involves the two main electrodes that are the cathode electrode which is the dme electrode or the dropping mercury electrode and the anode which is the again electrode present at the bottom so what are next present in this uh, polarograph this is actually the polarograph known as polarograph and the graph which we draw from this uh, instrument when we apply this mechanism on a specific analyte if we get a, a current then that current we uh, plot in a graph form that graphical representation is known as polarogram the graphical representation is known as polarogram and this instrument as a whole is known as polarograph okay and uh, further in this polarograph we have electrolytes present here and that is that are represented by mean of dashes this dashes that are electrolytes and the stars represent the analyte that we are supposed to know about that analyte so in this polarograph we actually find the qualitative and quantitative analysis we go through this 
if we go through this practical or this analysis or this mechanism, we can understand about the analyte qualitatively and quantitatively. Uh, okay, then what happens in this polarograph? The supporting electrolyte, why is it given the name supporting electrolyte? Because it supports the process of polarography. How is it supporting? It supports, it supports the polarography in the sense of providing the potential drop means it reduces the potential drop and it also reduces the resistance the potential that is coming here and the resistance between the analyte and the electrodes that is decreased means a continuous amount of potential is supplied and the resistance is decreased then what happens then the analyte can easily move from the space from its position to the electrodes especially to the dropping mercury electrode now if we start the potential, the by mean of potentiometry or potential state, which is uh, responsible for giving the potential and for measuring the potential and the current. Okay, so as the potential is supplied by mean of these electrodes to the solution, the analyte present here will split. As we know, the analyte is made up of ions, positive and negative ions, and electrolyte is also having ions because uh, the electrolyte we use here is potassium chloride and can be another one also potassium nitrate or etc so the potassium chloride you know potassium carries positive charge and chloride carries negative charge so when we go through the electrolysis it then forms the potassium positive and the chloride negative ion then these are transferred then these also after electrolysis generate current so uh, after coming to the point <clears throat> the responsible things that we should know about this process mechanism that is, there must be a very secure mechanism, a very protective mechanism. How to protect this whole polarography? We must be having nitrogen flushing because you know oxygen that is responsible for redox selection. So we must remove oxygen from this polarograph. We will go through the nitrogen flushing. What is nitrogen flushing? By means of nitrogen compounds, we will eliminate the oxygen from this our polarograph. Then this polarograph will be easily available for the analyte to interact. Uh, to go through the oxidation or reduction reaction then our analyte will go itself for any kind of oxidation reduction reaction that it wants then what happens after nitrogen flushing after having the supportive electrolyte in a very excessive amount and in a very minute amount we will have our analyte so what will happen then as we start the potential the analyte or the electrolytes they will break after the breakup the analyte that will start moving from its point where it is present towards the electrodes that is the cathode electrode which is the dropping mercury electrode so our analyte will start moving analyte will start moving towards this electrode it can move by three ways by diffusion by migration by convection by diffusion you know simply from the higher concentration to the lower concentration when something moves that is called diffusion gradient okay then we have migration what is migration migration is the same movement but the analyte that moves because of the electric field generation means any electrostatic force is there that will con uh, attract or repel the specific analyte towards the specific electrode. <coughs> Sorry. And another one is convection. Convection is that method of transfer of the uh, temperature by means of the heat change. What happens? By means of the heat change when the transfer of the ions take place in a liquid that is known as convection. Temperature change when there is a temperature change because of the temperature gradient from high temperature to the lower temperature or from the lower to the higher temperature when the molecules that move or the ions move then that is known as convection. So by these three ways this analyte will move towards the what specific electrode. As you know the ions if they are in motion they will generate the current and that current is measured what will happen then then we will have some kinds of current what are that kinds one given the name is ir the residual current another one given the name i max or i avg the maximum current or the average current and one is given the name id the diffusion current this diffusion current is the that current which is the actual that we need in the polarography and this diffusion current is obtained from the residual current and average current when we minus or subtract 
the average current or the maximum current from the residual current the remaining is now is diffusion current and uh, where the residual current comes from what is the residual current residual current is actually the current that is generated by the electrolyte before we start the procedure means if you have a baker and you have electrolyte that electrolyte has somehow a sort of current that is known as residual current when we plug all the apparatus in then what happens that potential generates some current then the residual current to plus some other current is generated that will lead to the diffusion current and average current so the residual current is present already since beginning since the start okay so that's it about the polarograph and uh, the polarogram hope so you got and uh, keep on watching the many uh, such videos of chemistry biology physics mathematics pharmacology and etc so stay tuned with us